Wow. Isaiah. <coughs> Isaiah 61. Beautiful, beautiful passage. I love it. We've made it to the last day of the year. How about that? It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, look to the person on your right and say congratulations. We made it. Congratulations, we made it. See, we look at little things and we think they're so little and we are not excited about it. Making it to the end of the year is a great one. Because as um, one of the preachers said before, we should be grateful that we did not change our dress. A lot of people changed their dress this year. <clears throat> I buried some of them because they were part of my family. They don't live in the address they used to live anymore. They have a different address. But you still live in your own address. You wake up in a warm house. Maybe not as warm as you think it should be. Think about those outside on the street in this cold. Then be grateful. Be full of praise. Before I even read today's passage, what the Holy Spirit was placing in my mind is praise without excuse. Praising without excuse. You know, we all have excuses why we shouldn't do things, right? I, I'm too tired. I've been working all day, so I don't have time for that. Um, I've been praying for God to do this, that, and that for me. I wanted him to heal me, and he hasn't done it. So why exactly am I praising him? Uh, you are alive. You breathe the air. You don't pay for it. Some people pay a lot to breathe the air you have for free. So, praising him, even because of the air you breathe, is a good thing. It's important. Isaiah 61. It started with the prophets proclaiming or announcing that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. And the spirit that's upon him has been given to him with a message to go and preach the word. When you hear that, you say, well, that was Isaiah, not me. Mm. You as well have been given that mandate to go and preach the word. And you're thinking, yeah, where did he say that? Yeah, he did. He did. He said that we should go. And he said, go ye and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. And that's in Mark 16, verse 15 to 16. Go ye and preach the gospel. So that's a message that was sent to you as well, just like it was sent with Isaiah. But just pretend that it wasn't Isaiah that is there and God was speaking to you personally. And it will be the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Betty. Yeah? The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, Adam. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, Nigel. To go and preach the gospel. And some of us will say, well, I'm not very good at um, the scriptures. So I cannot do that. Those are excuses. You know, your life. The story of the things that happen in your life. 
are enough to tell somebody about Christ. We think oh, only when we pick the Bible up that we can preach. But when you tell people about what God is doing in your life, they are big, they're powerful. Yesterday I was telling somebody about, you know, picking up a car. Those of you know that I, my car was written off because of accident and stuff like that. A lot has happened this year that I personally, I am grateful for. And I was telling this lady about this. And she says, I tap into your grace. I tap into what God is doing in your life. And I'm thinking, hmm, yeah. You know, I'm preparing this. Praise without excuse. This is what God has given me. And God has done so much for me. And I didn't actually see it that way. Why? Because I was praying for a different car. But you know what? God knows what we need, not our wants. He knows what's best for you. You know, like as children, we want to do what we think is right for us. But mom and dad that knows better will say, um, I don't think you should do that now. You think, yeah, but that's what I want to do. Your wants doesn't make it right. God sees far beyond what we can see. And when the lady said to me, you know, I tap into that grace, into what God is doing in your life, it made me go back and think and say, Father, I thank you. We have traveled this whole year. Some people have you know, stop their feet in different places. It has been hard. But we are here. The last leg of the race. And it's one that gives me joy. To know that God is a faithful God. Isaiah said the spirit of the Lord is upon him to preach good news. Jesus himself said the same thing in Luke 4, verse 18 to 19. He says the spirit of the Lord is upon him to proclaim the year of jubilee. The spirit of the Lord is upon you to go out there Go in the community and tell somebody what God is doing in your life. It's not only mom and dad that does it. Even the young ones do. The spirit of the Lord is upon you to preach. Our young lady there goes upstairs, help in the children's ministry. She's doing God's work. What are you doing? What has been placed in your heart this year to run with for the Lord and you haven't done it? Always remember, his spirit is on you to do that thing. Are you doing it? I want to go through this passage one after the other because it's not very long and there are things that we just need to look at. He said, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. Do you, 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 even me, do we really delight and rejoice in God? Some Different uh, version says, you know, they sing, I sing greatly to the Lord. Singing is done in different times in our lives. We sing when we dedicate a child. 
We sing during the wedding ceremony. We sing during the funerals. We sing at Christmas as well, don't we? That we've just done. So singing is very important. I often tell clients, you know, when you're down, put some music in your ears, go for a walk, it's great. If they are Christians, I say, put some praise and worship on. Take yourself for a walk, praise God. Even in your low spirit, you will be lifted. So praise is something that we should all do. This passage talks about the bridegroom. I want to take you to looking at the bride. The bride gets married. I know sometimes in the modern age, they don't change their name, okay? So follow me on this. <laughs> when you get married, the bride changes their name. So when we read this scripture, and, you know, the Lord is going to give us a new name, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. So when you're married to Christ, when you change, you repent and becomes his bride. You change your name from who you were to his bride. That's your new name. You become the bride of Christ. His and his alone. And that's a good thing. Knowing that you are Christ's bride. And your name will no more be Betty, the one that hmm, used to go to uh, nightclubs, to Betty, who will go to praise nights and preach the gospel. Is that a change of name or not? It is, isn't it? Did you change name when you change from where you were? We hear stories here of people when they change, when they become Christians, how they stop the life they used to live and start living a different life. And that's a gift as well from Christ. In chapter 62, from the verse 1 there, it says, For Zion's sake, I will not keep silence. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn. Has salvation like a blazing torch. For Zion's sake, I will not keep quiet. For the sake of those out there that have not heard about Christ, for the sake of those out there that don't experience what we experience as Christians in following Christ. Let's not keep quiet. For the sake of the child that is out there, that without you explaining to their mom or telling your own story, that that child will suffer if they don't hear for their sake, please don't keep quiet. We have been sent on an errand. <laughs> I think I've said this before. I used to say, 
the Israelites, hmm, how can God, God himself, send you to do something and you will not do it? I just do it a little bit and then the next thing you turn around and leave it. I'm like, if God sent me, if I was, if I was there, you know, in that time, I'll be very good because everything God said, Betty, go and do this, I will do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because today we have things that God has said we should do. And we also don't do it. We actually do worse than them in most cases. But we are good to say, you know, yeah, I won't be like that if, it, if I were there. Mm. We are doing worse than that. We're not actually following the instructions. The Bible, as I was taught, and as I always say, is our roadmap for life. There's a lot in it that God said, don't do. And we will do it today. And say, you know, it's was just a little thing. There's no little sin. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. But yeah, we have grace. But should we continue sinning for grace to abound? No. We need to follow and do what Christ has told us to do. In this grace, just don't keep quiet. Keep telling people about him. Keep praising God and making others to know that he is good. Keep explaining to them when they say, okay, if God is actually good, why are there wars? Keep explaining to them in spite of that. He is still God and he is still good. So your year did not go according to plan. New Year resolutions. <laughs> Who have written one? Hello? No? Oh, you guys are very good. <laughs> we are all very good at writing them down. <laughs> but we don't follow them through, do we? But I want to encourage you today. Before 12 midnight, write something down that you're going to do for God this year. And I'm not talking about that I'm going to lose weight. Mm, that's for you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> not that one. What? <laughs> How? Not that one. What are you going to do for God? If I'm not serving in the house, can, is there something I can do? I grew up with, um, you know, my mom and other women saying, you know, even if I'm not going to read in church, I will clean the house of God. That's a big thing. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. So whatever you're going to think about, how you're going to serve God, how you're going to worship him, do it. Praise without excuses. King David was a very big king, isn't he? We read about him in the Bible. If a king could get up, dance, you know, without thinking about his majesty, his royal, you know, uh, 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 crown, he danced to the point of exposing himself and his wife says he was dancing undignified this morning I was listening to a service and they were singing a song saying you know I might be undignified don't mind me I'm just praising God so as we're going to end today I want to encourage you this year we're going into to praise God in spite of whatever you're going to see. The Bible says that we should praise him in the good times and the bad times. I don't know what you're going to do tonight to see in the new year. I want us to do something just now. I want everybody to get up, 
please. Yeah, we're going to praise God. We're going to dance to say thank you for 2023. Whatever has happened, we want to still say thank you. So, let's dance like David danced in praise of our God.